Hello and welcome to a priori time this. Today we'll be reading uh, from a book entitled An Introduction to Oriental Mythology, whose uh, contributing editor is Cleo Whitaker. And uh, just open to page 22 here, we'll learn about Nuwa. <clears throat> and this is entitled Nuwa Peoples the World. There was once a goddess who was half human and half snake. Some say half dragon. She had the ability to change shape and could do so many times a day. One day as she wandered through this newly created world, she felt that although there were many wondrous and beautiful things, it was a lonely place. Nuwa yearned for the company of beings like herself with whom she could talk and laugh. She came to a river and sat down on the bank gazing at her reflection in the water. As she mused, she trailed her hand in the water and scooped up some mud from the riverbed. She kneaded the clay into a little figure, only instead of giving it the tail of a snake, like herself, she fashioned legs so it could stand upright. When this little creature was placed on the ground, it at once came to life, prancing around her and laughing with joy. Nuwa was very pleased with her handiwork and determined to populate the whole world with these delightful little people. She worked all that day until nightfall and started again at dawn the next day. But Nuwa soon realized that the task she had set herself was immense and that she would be exhausted before she had made enough people to fill the world. However, by using her supernatural powers, Nuwa found she could achieve her wish. She took a length of vine, dipped it in the mud, and then whirled it round in the air. The drops of mud that flew off the vine were transformed into little people when they touched the ground. Some say that those who had been formed by Nuwa herself became the rich and fortunate people of the earth, and those formed from the drops of mud became the ordinary, humble folk. Nuwa realized that in order to save the human race from becoming extinct, when her original people died, they would need a means of reproducing. So she divided the humans into male and female so they could produce future generations without her assistance. What do you think so far, baby Gerald? What do you think, Texadilla buddy? <clears throat> Another story recounts that long ago, there were only two people in the world. Nuwa and her brother Fushi. They wanted to marry and produce children, but were afraid to consummate an incestuous marriage without authority from heaven. One day they climbed the sacred Mount Kunlun in the west and each built a bonfire. The smoke from the two fires mingled together and they took this as a sign that they should indeed become husband and wife. Out of modesty, Nuwa made herself a fan of straw and with this, she covered her face when they were joined together. It is still the custom today for a bride to hold the fan. These tales contain a number of features that are common to the creation myths of many cultures. The idea of an egg as the beginning of the world occurs in Indian mythology, and the concept of a single progenitor of the human race can be found in cultures as diverse as those of Greece and Polynesia. Even within China, themes and motifs occur in numerous guises. A folktale record, recorded in Hebei province gives Pangu as the maker of the mud figures that became the first humans. And in another story, the union of Tianlong and Dia, attendants of Wenchang, the god of literature, gives rise to the first humans. The universality of these motifs seems to indicate the similarity of concerns of people the world over, and the degree to which there is a shared human experience. The structure of the classical Chinese world is indicated in several sources, and from these it is possible to see that there were a number of cosmographies, theories of the universe. 
of the Swanya school, very little is known save that its followers believe the sun and stars move freely about the heavens. One school held that the universe was in the form of an egg in which the sky was painted inside the upper part of the shell and the earth floated on the ocean that lay in the lower part of the eggshell. A still older tradition, the Zhao Bei school, held that the sky was an inverted bowl rotating around the axis of the pole star. The earth was a square underneath the sky, bordered on each side by one of the four seas. The sky was conceived as a solid dome, supported by four or eight pillars or mountains. The fact that the pole star does not occupy a central position in the firmament is ingeniously accounted for in the following myth. This is entitled Gong Gong's Defeat. Gong Gong. One day the gods Gong Gong and Shurong decided to do battle in order to find out which was the most powerful. After many days of fierce fighting, in the course of which they tumbled right out of the heavens, Gong Gong was defeated. He was so ashamed that, that he resolved to kill himself by running against Mount Bujo, one of the mountains holding up the sky. The mountain came off much the worse from this encounter as a great part of it came crashing down. A jagged hole was torn in the sky and great crevasses appeared in the earth. From these massive chasms, fire and water spewed forth, causing a great flood that covered the surface of the earth. Those who escaped drowning saw their crops and homes consumed by the flames. Nuwa, who had given these people life, could not bear to see them suffer so, and quickly acted to restore order. She chose some colored pebbles from the riverbed and melted them down into a viscous substance with which she was able to repair the damage caused to the firmament. In order to be sure that the sky did not collapse again, Nuwa slaughtered a giant tortoise and cut off its legs. These she placed at the four points of the compass as extra supports for the heavens. Nuwa thus restored order to the world and enabled human beings to carry on their affairs in peace. However, Gong Gong's collision with the mountain had caused the heavens to tilt in the direction of the northwest, leaving a void in the southeast. This is the reason all the great rivers of China flow toward the east, emptying their waters in that huge ocean. It is clear that one of the great concerns of Chinese mythology is the maintenance of order and stability. The belief that natural calamities on earth were caused by disharmony in heaven is reiterated many times in the tales of ancient China, although there is only space here for a few of them. Was that fun? Did you guys enjoy that? Very good, enjoyable stories. Okay, thank you all very much. <clears throat>